All right, welcome in. It's another edition of the FanDuel Hurry Up. I'm Joe Ranieri, joined alongside by Tom Vecchio, number fire. And we thought it'd be great if we talked a little bit about some NBA futures. The games will be back. We'll be excited for them. And of course, uh, some are, well, let's say as far as the odds go, a little bit uh, better priced than others. And Tom, why don't we start uh, first and foremost with some of the favorites on the board right now, according to FanDuel. We'll start with the Milwaukee Bucks. Your thoughts on the Bucks championship odds? So we're dealing with, you know, just uncertain times right now. When will the games be back? A month, two months. But I want to be looking at is like who is going to be benefiting from this time off the most. And I think we want to be starting with the Bucks. We know that Kumpo was dealing with a knee injury prior to the suspension of play. They actually lost three of their past four games. And they are, you know, the, the favorites win the East. They're actually the odds on favorite to win the title right now. So we have a strong team already. We have, you know, an MVP caliber player who was a little bit banged up and should be fully healthy when the season resumes. So we're taking this step by step. Okay, we're, they're checking off a box. They're already a good team. They're going to be getting healthier. And we want to be seeing what they're going to be looking like when the season comes back. So I am on board with the Bucks and odds on favor. You don't get the best value on them, but they should be able to pull it out. All right, Tom, and another favorite, of course, uh, preseason favorite of a lot of people as well. How about them Los Angeles Clippers right now coming in at plus 340? I think the Clippers are also kind of in the same situation. We know that Kawhi is still dealing with or will always be dealing with this knee injury, taking games off here or there. We know that Paul George started the season dealing with the injury. He didn't play. He came back. He looked good. He looked bad, hot and cold, dealing with another injury around the all-star break, they are also a team that should be benefiting from the time off, you know, getting these players healthier. Pat Beverly was dealing with an injury. They picked up Reggie Jackson. You know, they have the pieces to get it done. And if you really think about it, uh, two months in the middle of the season for Kawhi to stay healthier, to stay fresh, come back even stronger, a player that has all the upside, who has the playoff experience, you want to be, you know, siding with the Clippers, siding with the Bucks. some of these teams that are just going to be better once the season resumes. Yeah, and the Clippers certainly have enough firepower, and they made some amazing moves, of course, at the trade deadline, too, to give themselves even more depth. So a lot of people, Tom, think that the, uh, you know, the path from the West is going to go through L.A. one way or the other. So let's take a look at that other team that plays in the Staples Center. Your thoughts on the Los Angeles Lakers championship odds? Yeah, so I think we got to be liking the Lakers. They already clinched a playoff spot. We saw it when they played the Clippers that Saturday or Sunday, a week or so before the season paused. Everyone was saying, okay, just fast forward to the Western Conference Finals. Give us seven games of these two teams going head to head. Uh, the Lakers really weren't too injured. We know that, you know, Anthony Davis is always going to be listed as probable. He's a player that should be benefiting, but they have the depth. They have Rondo. They have Howard. They have JaVale McGee. Uh, they picked up uh, Markeith Morris. Like, they have the pieces to get it done. So I'm going to be taking a healthier AD, a healthier LeBron. Like, all these three teams are kind of the same. They're pretty heavy favorites. They were the favorites coming into the season, and now they're just a little bit healthier. All right, million dollar question here because it's uh, it's been asked and it's a fair question. Who does this time off help the most, in your opinion, of those favorites? The Bucks, the Clippers, or the Lakers? I got to be siding with the Clippers. We're going to take uh, Kawhi, just a player that has shown that you know championship pedigree combined with their depth. I think it's a little bit better compared to the Bucks and the Lakers, and you're getting a little bit better of a price compared to the Bucks. All right, so obviously not all favorites uh, are there on the board. There are some value plays that uh, that folks should be looking at as well at FanDuel. Why don't we turn our attention to the East? Let's go Boston Celtics right now coming in at 20 to 1 at FanDuel. Some people still think they're a sleeper and a, and a good chance to uh, make the run from the East for a championship. What do you say, Tom? I would say I agree with that. In the East, everyone assuming it's going to come down to some combination of the Bucks, the Raptors, the Celtics, the 76ers. The Celtics were really banged up, you know, heading into the pause. Kemba's missing time. He's back. He's missing time again. Tatum missed a few games. Jalen Brown missing time. Gordon Hayward missing time. We have four starters that were in and out of their lineup very, very uh, frequently, you know, in the last month or so before the pause. We have uh, you know decent playoff experience between all four of those players. They're getting healthier. They have a good amount of depth. I'm not going to say it's amazing. They have a good coach with Brad Stevens. It's plus 2,000. I mean, I think they can match up pretty evenly against the Raptors or the Bucks. Uh, I want to take a healthier Celtics team at a great, great price. 
Size is the only thing people keep pointing to. Do they have enough size to be able to compete? Uh, you know, there's a reason why Philadelphia has owned them uh, over the last year or so, but that also remains to be seen how it all plays out. Another team, another favorite uh, of a lot of people that's got some value. How about the Denver Nuggets? A little bit inconsistent there throughout the season, but certainly a team with some home court advantage that might provide some value for betters. Yeah, the Nuggets are interesting. Not really dealing with too many injuries, you know, holding down the three seed right now. Good to, I would say, a great team, as you said, a little bit inconsistent at times. But they play like a really, really so uh, style of basketball. Very solid. They have a very, very deep bench. Uh, we know it's led by Jokic and Murray, of course. But then we have all these guys contributing, uh, whether it's going to be Gary Harris, whether it's going to be Will Barton, Grant, Paul Millsap can still put up decent minutes. You know, you, uh, mix in Torrey Craig in there, uh, Mason Plumley. Like they have enough depth. They have a great home court advantage, as you said. And they're kind of being overlooked at plus, uh, plus 2,500 right now. Everyone's going to be talking about, okay, the Clippers, the Lakers, what about the Rockets? If people are going to be overlooking the Nuggets, man, 2,500, I'll take them. Great value, especially uh, a little bit a year older. You know, they kind of pushed the envelope last year a little bit. So uh, they will be ready for a run. And it would be fitting for us, uh, of course, not to mention a bomb here on the board. But there is a bomb. And we don't know exactly when the NBA is going to hit back on the court. But if they are going to play the regular season out, you know, the 18, 19 games, might this rest not help the Portland Trailblazers of all the teams coming in at a triple digit number? 21,000 uh, plus 21,000 for the Portland Trailblazers. And prior to the break, we saw the news was that Yusuf Nurchich was going to be coming back on March 15th. Uh, obviously dealing or still rehabbing and dealing with the leg injury he suffered last March against the Nets in that uh, overtime game. Uh, we have a team that is sitting in the ninth seed right now, Portland is. We have a team that was in the Western Conference Finals last year. And over the past few seasons, it's like first round and out, first round and out. They took a, se uh, you know, a step last year getting to those finals. We have them coming back a little bit healthier. Now, this is very, very uncertain. Of, will Nurchich be even able to play 20-plus minutes? Will he be effective? All these sorts of things. But a team that could probably sneak into the playoffs as that 7th or 6th seed if they get hot, uh, depending on how many games they play at the end of the regular season, I kind of like them as like one of the best long shots on the board uh, to potentially uh, make that next step in the playoffs. Because you got to think that they, didn't do, they did the Western Conference Finals run last year without use of Nurchich. So he's back. They're a little bit healthier. Great odds there. I agree. And listen, if they will continue the, with the 18 or 19 game regular season, give them an opportunity to get in. That is certainly a dangerous team. So a lot to be decided yet. But the bottom line is still some value on the board. Tom Vecchio, number fires. Appreciate the time, my friend. Take it easy. All right, that does it here. It's another edition of the FanDuel. Hurry up. I'm Joe Ranieri. He is Tom Vecchio of Number Fire. Good luck to you and be safe.